What's up everybody, it's Nosy Boy back with another video. Last time we covered General Grievous and this time we're going to cover Anakin Skywalker. Now before we get into everybody's favorite sand hating, youngling slang, father of the year, I have to give some credit where credit is due. The Falcon Jedi has done a ton of work on concept art for this episode and it all just looks incredible. He spent his own free time helping make this video better, so please go check him out. He's a great Battlefront YouTuber with a knack for Photoshop, and most importantly, he doesn't clickbait. You'll find a link to his channel at the top of the description, so go please, please just go show him some love. He is the greatest. I appreciate his help so much. Also, I really have to thank you all for 3,000 subscribers. My goal was to reach 3,000 by the end of April, and we did manage to do it. I was going to thank you guys with a, your own video yesterday, but when I recorded the video, it felt rushed and it just didn't feel good. I hate the idea of pushing out content when it could be better. I don't want to make a video just for the sake of making it. So this has led me to make another executive decision. Oh boy, another nosy executive decision. I'm sorry, but this series isn't going to be weekly anymore. Sometimes you'll get one a week, sometimes you'll get two. You're not going to get an exact day when it's going to come out. If you want to know, I would follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. I give a ton of hints on when my next content is going up on the website. Now, with all of that out of the way, let's get started with this video. I think you'll like this one. Anakin Sky Guy is going to have the average health for boys his age at 750. And he can take a whopping 250 damage before he loses permanent health. His default appearance will be his look from Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. His movement speed will be above average, just 4% slower than Luke Skywalker. His dodge and his jump height, however, will be equal to that of Luke's. He's only going to be able to dodge twice in succession as well. Anakin, like Obi-Wan, is going to have a passive. I hate sand makes him 5% faster and do 5% more damage on maps with a lot of sand as it fuels his anger. This includes the beach of Kashyyyk, Tatooine, Jakku, and Geonosis and Scarif when or if they get added. Anakin does 110 damage per swing, and he has an average damage per second of 220. He's going to be one of the few who can swing twice per second, and he has the highest stamina for swinging his lightsaber in the entire game, as he was a prodigy in lightsaber combat. His blocking drains stamina at an average rate, and he doesn't naturally have perfect deflections. However, Anakin loses slightly less stamina than the rest of the cast when blocking lightsaber attacks, as he's one of the greatest duelists in the Jedi Order. He's not just a better duelist than the men, but the women, and the children too. Now before we get into Anakin's first ability, Saber Throw, you're going to notice a pattern with Anakin's abilities. They're all variants of Darth Vader's. It would be really odd for the Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker movesets to have completely different abilities, as they are the same person. While Vader did have to adjust how he fought due to his robotic limbs and heavy suit, I still wanted Anakin to mirror Vader in a few ways. So his first ability is going to be the lightsaber throw, and the first lightsaber throw ability on the light side. It'll do 120 damage to enemies it flies through, and as it flies back to Anakin's hand, it'll do another 120. This can total up to 240 damage if you can do math, enough to take out any infantry. The ability is fairly basic but extremely useful and it will be on a lower 7 second cooldown. The ability is pretty great in tight corridors packed with enemies when too far away to hit a lightsaber swing or just to clean up a kill on a rolling opponent or to slaughter some Tusken Raider children. Anakin's second ability is Uncontrolled Rage, Anakin's mirror to Focused Rage. This ability doesn't make Anakin tankier, however, but more offensive. Anakin has his movement speed increased by 30%, 
the damage on his lightsaber goes up by 15 per strike, and his abilities have their cooldowns reduced by 50%. This buff is going to last for 10 seconds. For this limited time, Anakin taps into his pull to the dark side, using it on the side of the Jedi and the Republic. There are no defensive benefits at all to this ability once again. Not even a reduction in damage or bonus health. I love the idea of Anakin being the greatest offensive powerhouse without becoming too hard to kill. This keeps Anakin from playing like a Vader clone. Anakin trades the bonus health and damage reduction for cooldowns and speed. This ability is going to be on a 20 second cooldown. Anakin's third and final ability is Force Crush. Guys, please stop saying he should have Force Choke. I've seen quite a few people say that this is the ability he should have, but they're all missing one gigantic problem. Anakin fights battle droids. Battle droids don't breathe. How the hell are you supposed to choke a battle droid? Every Anakin concept with Force Choke as an ability is a 0 out of 10 because Anakin isn't fighting pregnant Padmes, and that's the only person he chokes. So anyways, his mirrored move to Force Choke is, as I said, Force Crush. It'll do 120 damage, and if droids are killed by it, they'll have a special death animation where they are crushed into a ball of metal. Enemies not killed by Force Crush will be stunned, for two seconds, and their stun animation will be the character clutching their stomach in pain. This ability provides decent damage and a decent stun effect, so it'll be on a slightly longer cooldown at 15 seconds. This ability is super useful against groups of infantry, enemy heroes, and enemy reinforcements. It's also great for cleanup and for setting up kills. Now I've gotten some criticism about my star card section going on for a little too long and being boring. So I'm going to try and keep this section shorter and just go over what each star card does. I hope you like this more. If you don't, I'll go back to the old way in future videos. The first star card is Jedi Knight. Anakin's abilities have reduced cooldown times. At common, this is 5% less, and at epic, this is 10% less. The second star card is the Chosen One. Anakin gains health for every trooper he defeats, and slightly more health when he defeats an enemy villain. At common, this is 40 health, and at epic, this is 100 health per villain killed. Next up is Aggressive Negotiations. Anakin Lightsaber does bonus damage against enemy villains. At common, this is 5 damage per swing, and at epic, this is 20 more damage per swing. Anakin's next card is Saber Dash. He replaces his Saber Throw with a Saber Dash similar to Luke's and Yoda's. He has up to two of them at a time. This cannot be paired with other Saber Throw star cards. At common, this dash has a 10 second cooldown, and at epic, this dash has a 5 second cooldown. The fifth card is Robotic Throwing Arm. Anakin's Saber Throw gets thrown farther. At common, this is a 20% range increase, and at epic, this goes up to 50%. Moving right along, we have Powers Have Doubled. Anakin's Saber Throw does more damage. At common, this is a 10 damage increase, and at epic, this is a 30 damage increase. This next star card is Untapped Anger. Every time Anakin gets a kill in Uncontrolled Rage, the active time increases. At common, this is a 1 second increase per kill, and at epic, this is 2.5 seconds per kill. Next, we've got Extreme Crush. Anakin's Force Crush does more damage. At common, this is a 15 damage increase, and at epic, this is a 30 damage increase. Finally, we have Improved Force Crush. Anakin's Force Crush has more range. At common, this is a 10% range increase, and at epic, this is a 25% range increase. Now that I've gone through all the star cards, I would love, I would absolutely love if in the comments down below, you can tell me what loadout you would choose for Anakin Skywalker. Anakin has so many freaking skin possibilities. Let's just get right into the best part of the video. First, let's go over his Episode 2 possibilities, 
Of course, he can have his basic look from the movie, as well as his refugee outfit with and without the poncho. Why are there so many ponchos in Star Wars? Whatever, Anakin can also have a robed skin like he has the first time we see him slaughter children. For episode 3, Anakin can have his robed look and a hooded look like we see the second time he slaughters children. And he can also have a costume with his flight headset. Also, just give Anakin his shirtless skin. The more shirtless skins, the better if you ask me. Just take everybody's shirt off, except for the women, keep them clothed. Nobody wants to see that, am I right? We all just want to see our men all fucking... I'm not gay, whatever. Moving on, we can also give him his Clone Wars outfits from the earlier seasons and the later seasons of the show. Honestly, just give him every skin you can. Anakin is my guy, and it's not because he's an attractive dude. I swear. This is where the fun begins. I... I killed them. I killed them all. They're dead. Every single one of them. And not just the men, but the women and the children, too. They're like animals, and I slaughtered them like animals. I hate them. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating, and it gets everywhere. I don't think so. No one can kill a Jedi. Overall, Anakin Skywalker is designed to have abilities that reflect Darth Vader, since they're the same character from different eras. My idea was to have Anakin play like a much faster, unrestricted version of Vader. That way, when a go player goes from playing as Anakin one match to Vader the next match, they can feel what Anakin felt. They can feel how the suit makes him slower and clunkier, how it holds Anakin back. To me, that's why this moveset is the perfect representation of Anakin. The Jedi Knight would be so good on maps that lightsaber characters are good on. Maps that don't force him to be caught in the open by snipers and ion turrets. In Heroes vs. Villains, Anakin would be a great choice with his lightsaber stamina and damaging stun. The villains have the ability to stun heroes to death, so Anakin would help give the heroes a way to fight that with fire. Fire with fire. That's the best way to do it. To me, he would be a must-have for every match. At least until they finally nerf the stuns and balance Heroes vs. Villains. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this concept and like my ideas. Another gigantic shout out to the Falcon Jedi. Make sure to show his channel some love. He puts a lot of effort into his videos and I think you guys would like his content. Make sure to vote in the poll in the description below so I know who to cover next week. And make sure to join my Discord. Once again, I'm sorry I didn't upload much this week, but like... Classic Star Wars games are just too freaking juicy, and they came out, and I've been playing them. I I'm sorry. I got a little lazy. Make sure to follow me on Twitter. Link also in the description. And I will see you guys in the next video.